When epilepsy occurs, naturally, I and my patient want to know why. An important investigation to undertake is the brain healthy. This is very often the case, but now and again, we are able to identify changes within the brain that have been the trigger for a person's seizures. Sometimes these are sinister illnesses, tumours of the brain. In other instances, they are developmental changes in the brain that have waited many years to make themselves known by the presence of seizures. There are a number of investigations that I can undertake to produce images of the brain. The most common that I and my colleagues now utilise is magnetic resonance imaging of the brain. This is a rather brilliant technique that involves a patient lying still in what essentially is a very powerful magnetic cylinder. While they lie still in this rather claustrophobic space, radio waves are then put across their body. This allows images of the brain tissue to be generated and analysed by a computer system and it will then produce the images as if we had sliced through the brain like slicing through a loaf of bread. This particular technique shows the structure and tissues of the brain in very high resolution or detail. It is a claustrophobic procedure and for some patients requires a sedative beforehand. Commonly, imaging of the brain is needed after a seizure more urgently and magnetic resonance scanning is not appropriate. In this situation, patients often are asked to undertake a CT brain scan. This is essentially an X-ray scan. CT stands for computerised tomography, which is a term used by the X-ray specialists for when they create images of the brain, again as if it was being sliced through like a loaf of bread using a computerised system. X-rays are absorbed by the bone of our skull and as a result this technique does not provide the resolution of the brain structures that we can see with an MRI. But with modern CT it's sufficient to identify tumours within the brain, haemorrhages within the brain or sometimes other structural changes that may have triggered an epilepsy. Its advantages are that it can be done quickly over a matter of minutes as opposed to an MRI that might take 20 or 30 minutes to undertake. Because of its quicker time of scanning, it's usually more readily available, for instance, in emergency departments. In many patients, these investigations don't clearly localise how their epilepsy has arisen, and yet we, their treating doctors, might suspect that there's a focal abnormality. In that situation, we reach for further scans to look at brain structure. And perhaps the most common of this is a PET scan, a positron emission tomogram. This scan obtains images of the brain by looking at how the brain takes up a radionuclide tracer. In simple terms, this is a radioactive substance that is safe to be administered to a human given through an injection and the injection into a vein allows it to travel up through the bloodstream ultimately into the brain where the radio tracer is taken up by brain cells. The pattern of uptake can indicate areas that are overactive or underactive and give clues to the localization of epilepsy. A similar technique but using a different radio tracer called SPECT is also used. This refers to single photon emission computerised tomography. Perhaps it's best to think of this as being similar to PET in that we're looking at how the brain takes up a molecule that indicates brain activity. These type of scans are often most informative if they can be undertaken very soon after a seizure occurs. As a result, they're limited usually to patients who are within a hospital setting being observed for their seizures. Although this is an uncommon situation, when it occurs, this type of scan provides valuable information.